The level of healing that God has called us to now is the healing to this dying world. What do you mean dying world? We have people that are committing suicide because of their truth. We have people that are in prisons, that are in prisons, and they know that they did not commit the crime, but they cannot get out, so they're committing suicide, a dying world. Mm. We have people now that are battling with their gender identity, but because, nobody, because we have no laws to protect them, they're going to just kill themselves. We have sex workers that are now saying, okay, I'm going to take myself out of here, and I'm going to allow, I'm going to be, be a drug user because there is no laws to protect me. There is nothing to protect me. Look at your neighbor say a dying world. A dying world. Healing has to take place. Healing has to take place and healing starts with us because we, like, we have to realize that we have everything that we had to suffer, everything that we had to go through, everything that we had to endure. It was not for us. It was for that dying world. And so now I have a paradigm shift. So I don't praise God the way I normally will praise God. I don't. I, I don't. I, I do not. I do not limit God to my understanding and to my perception of who God is and what God is calling me to. Because anytime you say yes to God, you're saying you're saying yes to God on the level that you think God is calling you to. I can say yes to the church and the four walls. I can say yes to God laying on the hands. I can say yes to being a usher. I can, say, I can say yes to God to having a title in front of my name. But God, can I say yes to you when you're calling when you're calling me to go into places that I know they won't receive me? When you're sending me back to small towns to be visible light to people that are dying. Amen. Look at your neighbor say toxic theology. Toxic theology. We can say that about the people that do not affirm us, but where? have we found toxic theology in our lives? It was some things that throughout this whole, my whole studies that I was able to see that I have allowed, that I have been operating a toxic theology. Because for, for, because for a long time, I thought it was about me. I thought it was about the, the way I could move the crowd. I thought it was about, okay, what was God calling me to in this church? Because I said, God, if you bring a me in God, mind you, he's don't let us go out of the pillow. But I said, God, if you bring a me in, I'll embrace him. But if I don't agree with what they're doing, I, 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 I separate myself from them. But God is saying, Linda, I want you to, I want you to embrace it even when you don't agree. Because that's, that's, what's, that's, what's, that's the paradigm shift. When you can embrace people when you don't agree with what they, how they treat you or how they handle you or how they do things. That's right. And I was, and I was like, and, and it, was, it was so amazing to me because, if I can be transparent, I was dating for a, a dating this person for a year that was um, a white guy. And I didn't understand that. I, I, knew it, I knew we were called to each other, we were drawn to each other, but I knew it was something that was missing. I knew there was a lot of things that were missing. And this guy would force me to talk about politics. Me, being who I was and who I am, I, I felt like I didn't, I didn't want to hear about politics. That's something that, that's something that God is going to do that. I'm just here to pray. I'm not, I'm not called to the White House. I'm not called to argue with you and your beliefs. I'm just going to respect it and not, and, not, and not voice my opinion because I don't want to argue. But how many of us know that truth brings about an argument? That's right. And I had, to be, oh, I had to be okay with my truth bringing about an argument. I had to be okay with disagreeing that, okay, no, I don't agree with that. No, I don't support that. Because the truth of the matter is that the people are not afraid to tell you what they don't agree with and what they do not like. And so he I thought it was taking the humble route and saying, okay, and saying, oh, it's okay. Yeah, you have the right to believe what you believe. No, you have the right to believe what you want to believe, but you also have the right to respect what I believe. And at the end of the day, don't think just because you believe it and just because you have some proof to back up your fight does not mean that I don't have proof and evidence to back up my fight. And I find out a lot of times when, we don't, when people don't have that experience and when they don't have your experience, they limit your understanding. Mm. But... You have to put yourself in a place that I'm okay with hearing about somebody else's experience and to know that my experience is not maybe not the right one, but to also know that there is a that my experience will also bring light to a situation that we have that we, that has been lying dormant and that we have allowed to dwell in darkness. Mm -hmm. So I am now able to stand up against the principality, those powers, those powers that make okay, another thing. A side note, when I say powers, lots of when I say powers, we think about the pre we think about the presidents, we think about the, the senators, we think about the, we think about all the people that are in the government, their government electors and all these things. But you have to think about powers from this standpoint. What are the powers that you embrace? Mm. 
What are the powers that 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 you allow to be silent? That you, that you do not that you do not speak? Because I never understood the fact that people always said, "Women, you are a quiet storm." I didn't understand that my quiet, and that wasn't so much for what I was saying, it was who I was, who, how I embraced myself, how I walked in my truth. A lot of times your, 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 your visibility is that power source. Because whenever, you, whenever you're able to go into an arena that you know people are not, people not going to receive you and be in your truth and still be and walk with your head held high, you're not, people are not being able to see a certain kind of power about yourself now. So I, I, can, see, I can see that they're stronger, they're wiser, they're smarter. And so that's all because I'm allowing myself to operate in that power that I embrace. And so it brings us to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes, the Holy Spirit has came to, to be our comfort, to also give us power. Mm. So did you if you put it in this perspective, the Holy Spirit, people, people, some people say unconscious, some people say, you know, the Holy Spirit is a confidence. It's all of those things. But the Holy Spirit to me now from this day forward is that extra push, that extra level of confidence to know that I have a power source backing me up. So even when I feel like I'm not enough, or even when I feel like I'm not equivalent to the person that, that has that title in front of them, the Holy Spirit gives me that power. Gives me that power and extra authority to walk into a room and say what thus says the Lord. And thus says the Lord may not, may not necessarily mean, oh, God is going to heal the land. He's going to heal the land. But God, that, 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 is, that power source is me now coming in to say that God has sent me to heal this land. Mm -hmm. God has sent me to be the change in this world. God has sent me to be the change in this marketplace. And I have learned, I had to learn that I will, I, I, I sat back yesterday and I began to think about all the areas of my life that I am so powerful. I am so powerful when I go to my workplace. A black trans woman. People entrust me in the care of special needs individuals. That's, that's very sensitive. Mm -hmm. I'm able to go into rooms now and on boards and, and meetings now in my truth. That's one. The power to be a homeowner, being a black trans woman, most trans women are homeless or live in hotels. Don't twist it with posting. I'm not posting. I'm showing you the power that I have now. Okay? The power to go back home in my truth. Mm -hmm. To a small city where people are closed-minded and the only thing they know is gay. They don't know trans. All they know is DL. They don't know open. Mm -hmm. That's the power I possess. The pop, the most strongest power is to be a voice, a voice piece for God, for the kingdom. That is the power that I have that nobody can take. Because now I can say that I'm anointed. I'm anointed to go out and declare the works of God. And what I mean by declaring the works, not so, not, not so much to declare what God is doing in this house, but declare how, how my visibility, how my truth is going to bring a change to this world. Mm -hmm. Power.